Scotty McClue's National Mega Phone In. Yes, absolutely. Welcome back to the third and final hour of Scotty McClue's National Mega Phone In. This is the UK's number one radio phone in programme. Get your telephones, come and enjoy it. That's what it's all about. I've got the telephone numbers for you. They're all from the rest of the UK. You are the people who make the programme. That's what it's all about. Quality chit chat. Scotty McClue is the name. Don't ever forget it, and then you'll know where you are. And uh, we're talking to Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Hello, Scotty. Hello, dear. How are you How tonight? Are you? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very fine. well. I'm very well, too. Very well. Good. Better um, for hearing you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, gentlemen on earlier talking about um, spooky experiences and going to different places. Yes, a spooky. Right. Now, I'll tell you some Spirit, of Spiritual uh, experiences. Very spiritual. Uh, when my husband and I were in Germany, we were posted near to the Belfast concentration camp. Yes. And there's a monument in there to the Jewish people who died in Belfast. Yes. Now, when you look at one side of it, you cannot see it with the naked eye. You can only see this on a photograph. It's a small figure crouched down, and you can actually see the eye socket, the head, the arms, and everything like that. But when you look at, it's a big square monument, when you look at it, in the daylight, in getting on to, say, 5, 6 o'clock, when it's getting kind of dark, you can't see it mm. by the naked eye. You can only see it on a photograph. How interesting. And it, I couldn't believe it. And we, uh, I've got two or three photographs taken at different, different days, different times of the day, and this figure is there, but you cannot see it with the naked eye. You can only see it on a photograph. You don't think it's some sort of pattern that comes out of the granite or, or no, the stone? Definitely not, because I'm not the only one that has taken photographs of it. Mm, of course and not. And everybody's turned out exactly the same. You can you can make out the, the wee figure crouched down. Gosh. And there's also another place in Belson. They had erected a giant cross to, strange enough, Anne Frank. Yes. Now... It was actually planted at the other end of the camp and during a thunderstorm it was uprooted and it landed near to this monument and you can still see to this day where the paving stones should be square. They're all broken and now cracked. Tell, tell, tell me this one again, Catherine. Sorry, just I've, I've just slipped where, where you're coming from there. Tell me this again. This is another monument. No, it, it, it was a large cross. A large cross, and it it's to the memory of Anne Frank. Of Anne Frank. Yes. In, in Belson camp, and during a thunderstorm, the cross got uprooted, and it was replanted. It done it all by itself, and in the paving stones where it sat, the, you know, the square paving mm-hmm. stones, it's gone in at an angle, and it's cracked, actually, the four paving stones round it. But it has sunk so deep into the ground that they've never removed it. They've left it mm-hmm. from where it came from to where it landed. Oh, my goodness. So it's, it's a thing to think about. It's a very eerie... When you actually go into Belson camp, no birds sing. Now, I've heard this because I knew an old uh, uh, naval commander who, who was one of the first people into Belson. Mm-hmm. And he, yeah. he actually described the scene to me. Yeah. It was quite horrific. Well, um, we, we have a friend, an elderly friend, and he was one of the first in as well. And the, there are no birds sing. There's no grass grows. It's only like gorse and the uh, sort of moss and heather. You know, and it's silent, uh, absolutely I, I'm silent. I'm convinced because the spirits of all these people who have mm-hmm. gone will be round about. Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. You know, and there's probably a, a sort of, a, a, a great sense of peace, but an eerie peace. It is, it's a very eerie peace. Mm-hmm. And, but the funny thing is, the German people go there for a walk on a Sunday. Yes, I can understand that. You know, and, and, it is, and it's, it's so quiet, it is a lovely place to walk in, but it still has that feeling but about you see it. people say that of Culloden and, and this is what I'm saying I mean I'm not in any way um, yeah, uh, you know belittling that yeah, this yeah. That this is people but uh, I'm, I'm concerned about all the animal carcasses being buried because animals have spirits as well oh yes uh-huh. you know yes. and, and it, it concerns me that 
um, a lot of the bits of Cumbria and a lot of the sites up and down the country where these carcasses are built, uh, mm -hmm. carcasses are, are buried, I beg your pardon, where these piles have been built, um, I think that there will be something missing from these spots and I think that these spots will be troubled. I think so too, yes. Because, because animals have spirits. I mean, that's why I've stayed in, in a number of houses because obviously I've toured, I've travelled all over the country and I've lived all over the country and um, I've stayed in a number of houses. One of them, which was haunted, the ghost was quite clear. Um, well, you could not you could feel the presence, you know, quite a clear feeling of the fact that this, this, this presence, an unhappy spirit, an unrested spirit. And... Um, uh, I was working at the computer one night and I just turned around and I said, uh, you know, what? what's the problem? Who are you and what can I do for you? Quite yes. clear. Yes. And then I, I put on a record. Uh, in fact, it was actually Kenneth McKellar singing Do No Sinful Action. It was recorded in Paisley Abbey. Do oh. No Sinful Action, Speak No Angry Word, Ye Belong to Jesus, Children of the Lord, uh, was one of the hymns on this record. It came from an old aunt. And um, I felt this terrific grab round the neck. Oh. And I'm just wondering if uh, this spirit was a lady who had lost a child. Possible. It's possible, yes. You know, that's it was something like that. It was very troubled. And it wouldn't be the house. This was in Yorkshire. And it wouldn't be the house. It would be on the ground. Mm -hmm. You see? And the yeah. other thing, I've stayed in houses uh, and farms and what have you. And there have been very, very good spirits because you know that the cattle have roamed about and they've been happy. Yes. Very interesting. Oh. So there you are, Catherine. So I actually believe there's quite a lot in it. And to poo-poo it uh, completely is uh, is foolhardy. I know. Now, I was... What uh, are you and him muttering about there, the two oh, of you? he's listening on the headset. You're so funny. And <laughs> <laughs> mutter, mutter, the pair of you. You're, you're a great team. Me. Oh, you're great, the pair oh, of you. Oh, just on this subject, a friend of ours was talking. His name's Nora. You're, 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 you're absolute McClue disciples, aren't you, the pair of you? You know everyone. Definitely, definitely. Tell, right. him to, tell him to clear the trench! Clear the trench! <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, so, um, we, we've got a friend of ours, Nori. Um, he was telling us a second well, time ago. <laughs> um, you had a spiritualist on your program, James Byrne, Britain's leading medium. Yes, and he said he was absolutely marvellous. Oh, I missed fantastic. it. Fantastic. Yes, and he said he, said, he asked me to ask you what happened to him. Well, Would I you ever be getting him back? Uh, he was very, very good. I mean, remember I first met James, oh, nine years ago and used to have him on the radio down south. And we, we brought him up to the last radio station I was on uh, in Scotland. And uh, he, he, he was quite something new. I don't think the Scottish people had ever experienced that level of psychic facility. Mm. Well, this is what our friend said. Um, uh, Nori said he was absolutely fantastic. Well, what he, he, what he, he told. well, what he did say, he said to one lady, just at the end of the program, um, I can see uh, he's, your, it's your father. He is surrounded by a number of women. And I don't know why, love. You know, so the old language just stuff. I don't know why, love, but I can see roses. He's saying thank you for the flowers. And he's surrounded by about um, five or half a dozen red roses. What, what does that mean? And she said, I don't believe you've said that because there's myself and my five sister and we all put a rose in my father's coffin. There you are. Now, you see, he couldn't have possibly known anything like that. And I've worked with him in a number of programs and everyone knows I would never, ever, uh, you know, have the public duped or put at risk or anything like that. And um, I've watched him work. There is no trickery, no uh, nonsense, no carry on. I've sat with him through the programs because I'm as much of a skeptic as anyone else. You know, but that's the gift he's been given. Yes, it's yes. a gift that God has given him, and it's marvelous. And he said it was his like life that. story. I remember he told me that his father he had a terribly, terribly violent background, a very violent upbringing, and his father was actually known locally as the Pope. He was a big Catholic Irishman. Mm. And he used to put people in hospital, this guy. Okay. And James himself will say that the night his father died, he couldn't say 
he was sorry. You know, he was sorry for him, but I mean, you know, just he was able, him and his family were able to rebuild their lives. Mm-hmm. And they're a lovely family. He, he was saying that he was standing at a bus stop one day and this lady was standing beside him. He never knew anything about psychic power. And this lady was standing beside him and she said to him, excuse me, you know, you have a great big man standing beside you. Goodness. And he said, no. He thought, you know, he obviously thought she'd lost the place a bit, you know. She said, she said, I'll have to explain. She said, I'm actually psychic and that you have a great big man standing beside you. She yeah. described his father and then she said, and he says he's very, very sorry. Oh, my. And that was his introduction to it. Mm-hmm. And she said, so you, you must be, you're, you're psychic yourself or he wouldn't be standing beside you. Oh, there you are. So quite amazing. So yeah, that was him. wonderful. So I think we all have uh, the facility, to a greater or lesser extent, to be psychic. And I don't yes. think there's anything particularly uh, eerie or anything particularly irreligious about it, or what have you. You no, know, no. Well, you know yourself. I, I know I misplaced something in the house. I, I think taffens. What have you done with it? What have you done with it? And then all of a sudden, like a wee voice at the back of my brain says. You've shoved it under the bed. I went look under the bed. That's where you did. Something like that. And I found it. Yes, yes. Have you ever done this one? Have you ever thought about someone and the phone goes? Yes. And it's them. Uh-huh. You see, I wonder how Auntie Fanny's keeping an end. Ring, ring. Hello, mm-hmm. dear. It's Fanny. How are you? Yes. <laughs> oh, well. So there you are. Great chat, but uh, lovely to talk to you. And look yeah. after that man of yours. I will you know. do. And he, uh, I was listening to Shap last night, you know, the... Well, te- te- tell him the greatest gift that a sapper's got has been fast on his feet. Oh, he's very fast. Yes, he's got very to fast. be. Especially when someone shouts, Clear the trench! True. <laughs> but you see, unlike your RAF caller last night, mm-hmm. my husband uh, doesn't have to ask you to match him off. Not at all. You just do it off your own back. I do. Yeah. It is all there, but I'm not going to march you off. Oh, bless you. Because you are the missus. <laughs> and I say to you, dinky-doo. Dinky-doo, Scotty. God we- bless.